Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Welcome to Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. I'm Susan. And I'm Lisa. Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about developing a strategy so that you can get the edge on your competition out in the workforce, in the business world, wherever you want to be. You know, when preparing for the show, Susan and I were talking about how it seems like there's so much more uh, competition for everything, whether it's getting a promotion, getting a job, or even starting it's, your own it's business. It's doggy dog out there. Yeah, and it's yeah. Uh, one of those things where you know one of the things I specialize in is communication, and it's so critical to be able to uh, communicate effectively about what you do and how you do it, but there's also a whole lot of other strategies um, and ideas for how to get the edge, whether it's uh, you know helping your child in school get the edge, or whether it's your career move, or even your, you know starting a business and getting the edge over your competition. Yeah, so how do you do it, and like where do you begin? And today we're gonna be talking about that. Yeah, so we have two terrific guests who uh, have a very a long history with uh, this topic and, and helping people with that. So we'll be back in just a couple of moments with our two wonderful guests. Welcome back to Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. We are so excited about the guests that we have tonight um, on our show. We have Tom Denham, who is a career counselor and a motivational speaker. And we also have Mark Grimm, who is a media consultant as well as a professional speaker. And also, um, you help people in a lot of different ways. Training. Which, yeah, yeah, training. That's what I was. That's where I was going. <laughs> All right, Tom, why don't we start with... Communication expert. Yeah, right? sometimes okay. my tongue doesn't work so well. Tom, why don't we start with you and just tell us a little bit about <laughs> what you do and how you help people and how it's related to what we're talking sure. about. Uh, I've been a career counselor for 20 years now, and what I do is I help people find out what they want to be when they grow up. And the way I do that is through a three-step process, has to be done sequentially, of self-assessment, career exploration, and then action plan. Mm -hmm. And there's one question that I help, well, one question for each stage that I help uh, people answer. And the first question is, who am I? Where am I going, and how do I get there? That's awesome. And so by the end of the process, which th usually takes five to seven weeks, people are much more focused, and then they have an action plan to implement. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. And yeah. Tom, you've been a guest on our show before, yes, right? Yes, and I thank you for having me back. I appreciate <laughs> it. I think I think uh, Dr. Denham, and it's Dr. Yeah, or Dr. Tom, Tom. Dr. Tom. Tom. I'm sorry. I that's okay. That's fine. Omitted the doctor. Um, it's Tom when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was on one of our very first shows. I think it was a third and fourth show, and I had just returned from having lost a job or given up a job in DC to return back to the capital region yeah. and was going through a career transition myself yeah. and your business uh, was careers in transition I think still is yes thank you and yep. so um, it was it was uh, I thought a, a very interesting show because we were talking about uh, who are you when you are no longer fill in the blank mm -hmm. and from that mm -hmm. we we really got to see that you can transition not just from one career to another career, but many aspects of your life. Mm -hmm, that's yes. right. Um, right. And, and the same approach can be applied to those aspects right. of life I, as well. I do a lot of professional goal setting, but I help people with uh, personal goal setting as well. Yeah. 
Well, they're very intertwined, but let's yeah. get Mark in here. Yeah. And why don't you just tell our audience about you and, and how you, uh, you know, are connected to this topic. Well, I'm Mr. Clarity, as one of my clients once <laughs> called me, I thought that was kind of funny, so I, I like to use that now. But everybody has a story to tell. And how you tell it is going to affect how well your life is and how well your business is. Absolutely. Think now with this communication explosion where we're bombarded with thousands and thousands of sources of information. But how do we get through that clutter mm -hmm. and with this compelling clarity? That is to say, what is you, you do that matters? And why right. are you a better alternative than anyone else? That Those are the two business applications. Are you very, talking about an, an, an elevator speech, having an elevator speech in place? Yeah, I think I, you hear the elevator term a lot. And I don't like the term because it's canned. And if you come across as canned, you know, if you're in uh, remote control, then people pick up on that. But you should have a clear idea of what benefits you deliver to people based on listening to them, mm -hmm. and then deliver it in a natural and a compelling way, in a passionate way. Because people want to see passion. Well, and, and I think Tom can talk about this too. We do a lot of networking to build our businesses, and you hear people all the time where they say, well, what do you do? And they come out with some generic, um, you know, thing like I'm yeah. a banker or I'm yeah. a financial planner or you know blah, and, blah, blah. and I'm a and, lawyer and, yeah and mission uh, statement stuff yeah and it's and, and then they go into what they do and they've already lost them yeah. Yeah. a lot of times because yeah, right. they're it's like oh I already know what a banker yeah. does or yeah. I already know I wrote this article for my blog people can google it it's called focus first network second I just want to build on something that Mark said is when people come to me as private clients they can't answer that second question is which is where am I going yeah. yes. so I have to back them up into self-assessment and then match what they learn in self-assessment to where they're going and um, just to uh, uh, build on what Mark was saying is you have to have crystal clear clarity about who you are and where you're going and then you can network. How can you get that clear about where you're going because I, mean, I have many, special many dust. No, no, <laughs> pixie dust, right? Yeah. No, I mean many people, for, for, I mean we are talking about this in large part because of the economic right. recession and you know unemployment is still particularly in this right. area you know quite high yeah um so many people are are using services like the services yeah. you offer because they lost a job right they lost a job involuntarily and so a lot of people are coming to you thinking i'll just you know i just need a job okay well that, that's you know a good point. i don't have the luxury of trying to figure out what i right. want to be when well, i grow there's, up well there's there's four things that you look for in uh, self-assessment i call them your vips they're your values your interests, your personality traits, and your skills. Mm -hmm. Values, interests, personality traits, and skills. So the way I do that is through career counseling, uh, career testing, and a questionnaire. So in that stage, you're, you're doing a lot of data collection. That's the hardest part. Most people are trying to do their job search first, which is the last part. That's the action plan, mm -hmm. and then they run in trouble. So when you do adequate self-assessment, which can be painful and hard and difficult. Or fun and challenging Or and fun, exciting. depending <laughs> upon your attitude. <laughs> but, uh, but, but what happens is when you go into the career exploration, then you have to prioritize the types of jobs. So the, the first choice job is your ideal job. The second choice is your backup plan, and then third choice is the survival job. Mm -hmm. So you have ideal, good enough job, and rock bottom job. So when somebody's been unemployed for like six months, mm -hmm. they're going to go for rock bottom because they, can't, they simply can't get ideal. But yeah. again, going back to Mark's point, you have to have clarity on what these things are. So you're not in the rock bottom job for the next 10 years. You're I think one of forward. the, uh, uh, Mark, I'm gonna let you come in next, but uh, the, one of the things, I said that like I'm in control, isn't that cool? You anyway, in control, <laughs> you're the moderate. One of the things though that I think is so counterintuitive, but is so important, is the more focused you are, the more likely you are to get what you want. If you say, mm -hmm. for example, when I first started my business and people would say, well, who's a good referral for you? And I'd say, well, anybody Nobody. who. Nobody was giving me referrals. But now that I say I work with managers and supervisors mm -hmm. on effective communication, I get so many more referrals because mm -hmm. I'm specifically telling people what to look for. Don't right. you think that's accurate? Yeah. How do you hit a target if you don't know what it is? That's right. Well, that's what yeah. we're talking about, talking about is identifying and targeting. And once you know what it is, then you have to make your case. Mm -hmm. And every time you open your mouth, you're making a you're case. You're making a speech. That's mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. it, it communication is this binary process, and it's not about you, it's about them. That's why I wrote my book on public speaking, because I didn't see any ones that I really thought focused on the audience. It's all about, well, what am I going to say? What am I going to That's wear? right. Stop right there. What The first question whenever you give a speech is, what does the audience want? Have you asked them? Have you defined that clearly? And then when you start, you say, you told me you wanted A, B, and C. What do you know? 
The presentation mm -hmm. today is A, B, and C. And if you don't mm -hmm. get it, you tell everyone Mark Rim is a lousy speaker mm -hmm. because it's about delivering value and then asking them when, you, when you're done, did they get that value? And that's more that's important wherever you're speaking. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a, an official presentation, mm -hmm. but if you're going for a job interview, mm -hmm. the, the, everybody listens through what's in it for them, mm -hmm. you know, or what, mm -hmm. how does this apply to yeah. me, or, mm -hmm. you know, w where do I fit in? Like, that's people are listening through their concerns. Mm -hmm. So I think whether you're going for a job interview or talking about a promotion or even talking to your child about something, mm -hmm. they have to see how is this relevant yeah. to mm -hmm. me. Uh, it can't be about you. And my Santa students, I teach journalism at Santa's an adjunct, and when I talk about how to get a job, mm -hmm. all of a sudden their attention yeah. perks up and says, don't go in there and say how much, how great you were on the Glee Club or, you mm -hmm. know, in the music. They research the company say, look, it, I understand you want A, B, and C. I can deliver A, B, and C, and here's the proof. Mm -hmm. Here's the proof that I can deliver A, B, and C, mm -hmm. and that's what's on my resume. Mm -hmm. Not listing my duties. I don't care about your duties. That's right. I want to know what accomplishments you had in that job, and what do those accomplishments matter to me because I'm looking to hire somebody to help me. Yeah, yeah. so it really all starts in a job search. It starts after you've done all of that inquiry and you figure out you know, mm -hmm. what is the dream job and what's the rock bottom job. Mm -hmm. um, it starts with a resume, right? A resume that is well, identifies your accomplishments. Well, it starts with somebody like Tom, though. People don't know what yeah. to do, Tom. They need yeah. your expertise. I mean, that's the <laughs> No, but no, I, I mean, just really. said that once they've, done all, once they've done all of the work right. and have gotten to the point where, okay, right. now I, I know what I want. Right. So, um, thank you, Mark, yeah. for the validation. <laughs> no, it is, it is. <laughs> because and you because know, I tell people, I'm just a job coach. Yeah. Um, but I don't think you can win by yourself. I'm telling people, you know, You've got to have somebody on your dream team, and I consider myself the head captain, but you've got to have ten, uh, nine other people on the dream team as assistant coaches, and I need some help here. And I tell people, don't do your job search by yourself. But what, you, what you're talking about is the mechanics of yes. the job search, that's stage three, and mm -hmm. in the action plan, you can either do a job search, go back to school, or start a business. Those are your three options. So when it comes to the mechanics, you've, you're talking about a resume, cover letter, interview skills, job, uh, job search strategies, uh, evaluating job offers, network, uh, and evaluating uh, salary. And the number one job search strategy, I really want to make this point, is networking. Yes. And mm -hmm. most people are doing their job searches all wrong. They're doing them uh, through career fairs, uh, classifieds, and through the internet. Those you can, you, sh you can and should do, but most people are spending the majority of their time doing that. And most jobs are never advertised, and people should spend 80% of their time networking. Mm -hmm. How do you get the cutting edge in your networking strategy? Well, th there are a couple things that come to mind. First of all, I would encourage everyone that is watching this show to get a LinkedIn account. Mm -hmm. So I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn uh, is how useful really is it? Fantastic, I mm -hmm. think, and it's I consider it the Facebook for professionals. So I will talk to people and they'll say, "Well, I have 500 friends in Facebook," but then they don't even have a LinkedIn account. Right. So you know, going back, going back to image, that is your brand. That is what you are putting out there. Mm -hmm. um, I use it in a variety of ways. Um, it, it's kind of like collecting business cards, or you know, when I was a kid, I collected baseball cards. The more uh, people you have in LinkedIn, um, the better of a safety net that you're going to have. Mm -hmm. and, and there's so many ways to use it that I think people so aren't even uh, right. aware of. But and, that, and we're all wondering, what should I be in? Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. I get those questions all the time. I say, be on them all. You want to be wherever potential prospects or customers or, or, or friends or whatever relationships you're trying to build are. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but have a consistent message on all of them. Right. And saying, you know, you know, if you're an expert, deliver value. This is some expertise. Here's, here's five great tips on writing a press release from somebody who's a former TV anchor. You know, those are the things that are going to get read because they deliver value. And right. Yeah. Integrate them and, and across that goes the back, platforms. I'm sorry, but that yep. goes back to what you were saying is it's not go up there and show how great you are. It's go up there and provide value and then you stand out. And I think mm -hmm. that answers your question about networking is you look to provide value. Mm -hmm. Like how can you provide value? I think if this recession has taught us one thing, mm -hmm. there is very, very little job security. And the job security that is out there is what you have to create. Now, Mark and I, we have our own businesses, so, and, and, um, uh, so we, we can't be downsized. 
Yeah. Uh, I talked That's to my job I, security I talked to my boss last yeah. yesterday. He said oh, I was doing fine. Being valuable is the most job security. <laughs> yeah. Bringing and value to people. That's right. There's, if there's, you deliver value, there's going to be a market for that. But you have That's to. That's right. You have to sell and, it. and I think mm -hmm. people have to be CEOs of themselves. Yeah. But they first have to define what their product is. Yes. And so when you're going to build a Facebook page or a LinkedIn account, you have to decide. Who am I? It goes back to self-assessment. Who am I? What is my product? What is my added value? What kind of a SME, a subject matter expert, do I want to put myself out there as? And everybody is that. And I think a lot of times people don't value it. They're, they're kind of all over the place. I want to go back to what you said about you being Mr. Clarity. How do you uh, see that role that you have? <laughs> and what does that mean? Yeah. Well, what is clarity? Because I'd like to get some of that. Because uh, we know what the lack of clarity is. When you ask somebody what they do three and a half minutes later, they're still talking and you don't have a clue what they're talking about. Right. Because people talk about uh, what they care, like there was a TV show one time and they asked, what's your business doing? He says, we make sodium nitrides and we split these sodium nitrides into nitrides. I thought to myself, well, yeah, <laughs> stop. That's not what you do. You deliver benefits that matter. So that's what they have to think about first is what benefits you do that matter to people. It doesn't matter that you know all the intricacies of how you do your job. Nobody cares about that. Mm -hmm. So keep peeling away the onion, and that's what as I call it. Peel away the onion and get to these core benefits. And then why are you different than everyone else? Mm -hmm. Every financial planner that you run into, you know, you run into five of them in every mixer, and they mm -hmm. say, why should I pick you? It's because of my integrity. I say, stop right there. I never met anyone who said, I'm great with numbers. I'm a little short in the integrity department. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great with numbers. You know, nobody admits yeah. it if they don't. Or I give good customer so, service. So, that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. That's what I get on the phone. Every time yeah. I call, I get placed on hold for six minutes. So yeah. uh, you know, unless you can prove to me you can deliver customer yeah. service, it goes in one ear and out the other. But you what know. you're saying, Mark, is something like a response um, that would be kind of a standout response would be, my clients re re receive a 2% greater return on investment than my competitors' At clients. At least some quantification. That's you know, the quantification. The quantification, you know, I'm a professional I think, is speaker. really key. Why should somebody pick me? Well, I've quantified. People have evaluated me over the last 10 years, and this is what they said. I actually have the quantification, mm -hmm. 3.96 out of 4, mm -hmm. but then the testimonials, which are the mm -hmm. personal story, right. putting yeah. a human yeah. face. Right. And all of those are on my website, right. so don't listen to me. Here's the evidence. So yeah. getting back to your yeah. comment about LinkedIn, I mean, there's, there's there's an allowance on LinkedIn to ask for what is that recommendations, uh, recommendations, recommendations or ratings or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really key uh, too. I, I love LinkedIn. I just want to point out something with with Mark here. I think it's great that we're doing a show with Dr. Tom and Mr. Clarity <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, if I had a magic wand and there was one thing I wanted to give my clients, it would be clarity, because if you do yeah. not have a focus, if you do not have clarity you cannot achieve your goals and Mark said it perfectly he said you have to know what the target is in order to hit the bullseye that's right and mm -hmm. most people are going through life they don't know what their personal goals are they don't know what their professional yeah. goals are that's true. once I help a client get that clarity then I can develop an action plan to help them get there in their personal and professional life then I have to motivate them to actually implement that plan mm -hmm. but to go through life and not know what your purpose is or what you want to achieve and then you wake up and you're 55 years old and you feel very frustrated because you have missed the boat I think that's why I get up in the morning because I want to prevent more of that kind of thing. Well and I think too you know this whole concept of clarity I mean I have said in my speeches for years a confused mind does not act mm -hmm. you know when people say they're stuck they're, it's because they're confused they don't yeah. they, they lack that clarity. And when you're confused or you are distracted, or you're multitasking, or in your mind you've got head clutter or head trash, it's very de-energizing. Yeah, Because you're draining. going off in a million different directions, mm -hmm. you can't focus, and then you can't realize the potential that you, you so often could okay, have. Okay, so what do people do? If someone's uh, been fired from their job, they're 50 years old, they're despondent, they're scared, they're lost. I mean, you can't just say, you know, get clear about what you want to do. Right. Got, there has to be there's a, a process yes, there that yeah, you've got to yeah, work that's, through. Sometimes yeah, you get the push, though. Yeah. I mean, I've been fired from jobs. I was in TV news, and it really makes you uh, uh, size up where you where you want your life to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the big question here: is what's going to make you happy? It's a wake right. up call. Because you can't yeah. answer any of these other things until you determine what makes you happy. Right. And once you see it, okay, I'm going to do what it takes to get right. happy. Good career counseling is really asking a series of questions. Mm -hmm. So the questions are, who are you? Where are you going? Where do you want to be in five years? If you only had 10 years left to live, what would you do? What has been your most significant personal and professional accomplishment up to this point? 
How would you know if your life was a total success? These are very difficult questions, and I have them all outlined on a 28-page questionnaire, <laughs> which is very challenging to do. I've never had one client that said it was easy to do. As a matter of fact, I had somebody just last night, and she took hours and hours and hours to do this, and she said it was very painful, uh, but she learned a lot about herself. Most people are just not simply self-aware. So do you think, and Tom, you had mentioned get a team of 10 people around you right. to be your support team or dream your, team, yeah. you know, your dream team. Yeah. So would they be a good source for, you know, tell me what I'm good at? Well, because yeah, maybe you know, I don't know. Maybe it, I'm not clear Or what about proof it. do I have? Yeah. It's yeah. interesting because in my sessions, let's for example say somebody has a spouse. I will say, um, what three jobs would your spouse suggest you pursue? And then I will say, what three pieces of career advice would you have them give you? And then I will say, what will your best friend do? And then in the questionnaire, I will say, li list three advisors, what three jobs, and what three pieces of career advice. Mm -hmm. So if there's a pattern, they keep saying the same thing. And sometimes people will say, you know, off-center things. Mm -hmm. But if they keep saying the same thing, that's good data. But mm -hmm. you have to couple that with the career counseling, with standardized career testing, uh, and the questionnaire. So there's, there's no magical formula to this, but you're constantly in that first stage, you're trying to data collect. Yeah, you're, you're right. It, you can't say, oh, you need to get clarity. Yes, it's obvious you need to do that, but the question is, how do you do that? Can, we, can I talk a little bit about media, because we haven't talked a lot about that, because part of getting your message out is understanding the media. When I, and I was a TV anchor for a long time, I, I think I understand the way they think, but the 21st century will be a lot about getting news from each other. And that, the traditional media will not have the role hmm. in the 21st century that it had in the 20th century. It simply won't. Because we have, the, uh, we, ins we have institutionalized this mass communication. And that's why clarity is so important. Because we're all journalists every time we hit the Facebook button. That's right. So mm -hmm. we build networks. We build a, an audience based on a, on a scientific way, mm -hmm. the way Tom Denham does. But we also have to understand, as journalists, we have to understand value and delivering value in a clear, compelling way. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I, and also be involved with the media, too. Uh, hit all of these things, traditional media, social media, make sure you're clear and understand mm -hmm. this broad, this, this mm -hmm. exploded platform of how people right. get information. So you're actually saying that anyone can can create a blog and use Absolutely. that blog yeah. to develop their expertise right. and get the word yeah. out about their expertise. Why, why, sh why should I rely on the Times Union to put my column in their mm -hmm. paper? Yeah. Who, who are they? I have a blog myself, and I can post it, and if it's interesting writing, and people will read right. it. So why should we depend on them as gatekeepers? Now, the question is, why do we need to do this in the first place? Yeah. Why do we have to get our message out? Why do we have to have Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn? Because it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Well, the thing is, because <laughs> there is no... You have to get the edge. <laughs> because there is no or very little job security, you've got to create that own security yourself by creating your own brand, becoming a subject matter expert, becoming a CEO, defining who you are, and then building your network. That's right. So if you are downsized or laid off, you're going to go to your LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. The problem with most job seekers today that have been unemployed for at least six months is they don't have a network, they uh, didn't nurture the network if they did, mm -hmm. uh, they don't value networking, and they're spending most of their time doing an internet job search. And there's a lot of people who think they're, they ha they're in it themselves. They have to do it alone. That's right. You know, that, that if they try to, uh, you know, get help in getting a job or whatever, yeah. they feel that the they failed because they, you know, didn't get... Uh, the number one reason why people don't give to nonprofits is they were never asked. So when you're doing a job search, if you've been unemployed for six months, you might be um, unwilling to say, yeah, I've been unemployed for six months. You're, 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 you're reluctant to ask for help. And that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing is asking people yeah. for help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is, this all goes back to what we were saying about clarity, is I've had, I have a lot of people who come to me and say, they're, you know, they've lost a job because they know I have a very large network. And, you know, and, and I'll say, great, send me your resume or tell me what you're looking for. And so many of them can't yeah, tell me can't what they're looking for, or it's so general, and I try to get them yeah. to be more specific. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The people who have said to me, I'm looking for X, Y, Z, nine times out of ten, I can help them or link them with somebody yeah. who can that's help right. them. Yeah. And that's why that clarity is so important. Well, I had a friend one time, he said, uh, all these people that he knows, he considers his ambassadors. That's great. I thought that was mm. a great line. I they speak that. up for them. But Because you know, we all say, oh, the value of word of mouth. Well, you push word of mouth along. You have to educate all these people that want to help you. And some of them are your family and your friends. They love you, for God's mm -hmm. sakes. But you have to say, I don't want people asking my brother, what does Mark do? And says, oh, I don't know, something in PR. Said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want right. to train them on Thanksgiving dinner mm -hmm. what I'm right. doing so they can give that clear answer. Mm -hmm. and, and people, ha you, have to work your, uh, you have to work the people you know to give them yeah. the clarity and keep on top of mind awareness. And that's one of the yeah. things LinkedIn and Facebook does too, is keep, keep your name out there. So when they say, oh, 
you know, I'm, I know if somebody's looking for media help, oh, Mark, I just happened to see your posting oh, the other right. day. That's but right. that consistent message is also important. And unfortunately, I've seen people use Facebook. They think, oh, it's social. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. do a Google search on a person, their Facebook comes up. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at that, and you see it as inconsistent with what they're saying on right. LinkedIn or yeah. what their resume looks like. Mm -hmm. You don't have the edge anymore. That's a fantastic point. Yeah. That's so a point. you really have to control your message. I mean, we've talked right. a little bit of, about branding. We yeah. haven't really gotten into what that means exactly, right. but you do have to control your message. Yeah. That, that, that's right. Um, so many people are impulsive when it comes to Facebook, and I don't think they're really stepping back and, and thinking about why do 500 people know that I just went to the bathroom? Yeah, and that yeah. now value. I'm having my What's morning coffee. Yeah, yeah um, and I think that goes back to what you're value. saying: is yeah. if you're if you're in the listening of the people that you're talking to, and you're worried about what's what's important to them, then you're not going to write that. You know, you're going to mm -hmm. say, you know, what would be a value? You know, maybe yeah. you put and they'd some like to know. Uh, they hear things that's going on in your life. I mean, they they want to hear it, but in, in, it's also good to use pictures and links. By the way, they, they just yeah. don't use enough photos. What what yeah. I hear from from everyone here is consistency. You know, mm -hmm. d d building your brand is, is really kind of like building a product brand, right. really. You have yeah. to get the a right. consistent, uh, a right. regular communication about who you are and what you're up to, and it needs to be a consistent message, and across a number of medium. It's your right? reputation. I mean, right? I, have, I sign my students, I said their first assignment is, Go ask five people what they think of you. That's brilliant. That's your brand. That's and, brilliant. And, uh, and make an impression. And Lisa, you're an expert at this. How do you make a good first impression? What is the best thing? What was the most important thing you would say in that regard? Because that's so critical. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's it, it's hard to say one thing. I mean, I definitely think you know people make a, a visual assessment very quickly. Mm -hmm. But I also think the first couple words that come out of your mouth are critical because people again are listening from what's in it for me and so if mm -hmm. I say what do you do I'm listening for how does this relate to me right. so you know I always try to uh, articulate or, to, or teach people mm -hmm. how to articulate it in a way that uh, you know that it gets across mm -hmm. we're almost out of time so I'd like to give you each a minute or uh, not even a minute but <laughs> a short <laughs> amount of time to, a moment to just you know if you could give our uh, our, our audience one tip or, or something that you want them, be, them to be left with or one action item that they could take that would Either be really in terms helpful. of getting a sure. job or yeah. building their business sure. or just, you know, establishing their expertise more broadly. Networking, networking, networking. Get off the internet, except for LinkedIn. Spend 80% of your time networking. Build a LinkedIn account. Set a goal for how many people you'll put in each, each week or each month. That is your safety net for your future career development. Mm -hmm. I would say become more dynamic at, at public speaking. I've written a book on it. Everyone can be a dynamic speaker. Uh, you really have to believe that because I started out as this wallflower and now people pay me to speak. And everywhere you go, it, it, people have told me, Mark, you've changed my life. So go hmm. reach out and get public speaking training because it can change your life. It's profound. And it's an edge. And yeah. it's an edge. Yeah. It's an it edge. is and because yeah. you could actually join a speaker's bureau. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever profession you are in, if you're an attorney or a dentist or a physician or an accountant, Usually, uh, there, there's a professional association that has a speaker's oh, bureau, sure. mm -hmm. and to just well, kind of get out there and start mm -hmm. practicing and building your network, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can sign up and do it. And mm -hmm. Well, because even when you're begin. public speaking, sometimes you have an audience of one, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and that's yeah. critical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being thank our guest. This has been an awesome show. You two have been just a lively, lively show. So yeah. thank you so much for watching Real Conversations, yeah. so much for watching Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. And get the ad. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.